Hi guys, welcome back. This is Matt Chat, episode 379, featuring a look at the game Odyssey the Complete Adventure, Synergistic Software 1980 by one Robert C. Clarty. Now, Clarty is a very early pioneer of the computer role playing game. Uh, he did some games before this one, actually, but I think Odyssey is probably his most uh, complete, <laughs> shall we say, uh, game from this period. And I think it's uh, well worth a look today. It's, uh, I think it launched on the Apple II, might be available for some other platforms, but uh, anyway, I'll look here at the Apple II version. Anyway, there's a lot to cover here, so without further ado, here is Odyssey the Complete App Venture. And here we go, folks, with uh, Robert C. Clarty's Odyssey the Complete App Venture. That's C-O-M-P-L-E-A-T-A-P Venture. So don't search for the uh, complete adventure. You'll never find this game. Which should be a real shame because it's one of those hidden gems of the very earliest days of the commercial role-playing game. The CRPG, my beloved genre. Here's one of the games that got it all started. Right here, Bob Clarty's Odyssey. Now this game was published by uh, Clarty's own uh, publisher slash development company, Synergistic Software. Back in 1980, of course for the Apple II, some of you guys probably recognize those very distinctive Apple II graphics there. And this was uh, back in the day when uh, commercial games, uh, especially computer games, uh, you didn't just uh, go to Walmart and buy these things, right? You had to go to these little computer shops. And there'd be uh, these pegboards with a bunch of little games and Ziploc bags. I mean, it was really sort of low-budget indie stuff. <laughs> and, of course, a lot of it was crap, uh, as, as you can expect, right? But uh, this is an example of one that was definitely not crap. Very innovative, very interesting game. And this is not Clardy's first game. Uh, he's, he's done uh, at least two before this one. Uh, there's one called Dungeon Odyssey. Or it was, was a Dungeon Campaign, I think. And then the other one was... Uh, uh, wilderness campaign. Uh, basically what he did with this one was put all of that together uh, into a sort of trifecta, I guess. So this game, actually there's one way to think about this is three different games. Uh, the longest one is the one I'll be showing you today. I didn't get to the second and third one. Uh, I'm just not that good of a player, I suppose, but uh, you can certainly check those out. But anyway, the first game is really the, the major one. Now, I don't know if you guys uh, follow me on my Matt Chat Facebook uh, page or group, whatever they call those things, but uh, if you are on there, you notice I said that I had read the manual for this game, and this was, uh, again, back in the day when you really needed to read the manual to have any flipping clue uh, what the hell was going on, uh, any kind of backstory, anything like that would be printed in the manual, and you'd actually have to sit and read the thing, which uh, was kind of nice because it gave you something to do while the, uh, <laughs> the, the game loaded off a cassette tape or a a floppy disk or whatever, a lot slower. Uh, well, actually, I don't know if it'd be that much slower than it takes to, say, install a game on Steam these days. But but anyway, gave you something to do. Uh, so just for fun, I thought I would read to you the scenario. And uh, you can guess uh, where uh, Clarity got his inspiration for this story. Uh, kudos to you if you recognize the, uh, the references here. Uh, anyway, here it goes. The Scenario. The Hyborian Age existed thousands of years ago, long before the dawn of true recorded history. Remnants of earlier races than man still wandered the earth, making it a dangerous place where only the most powerful wizards and warriors could live without fear. The vampires, werewolves, orcs, sea serpents, and dragons of our legends were the fearsome races that fought with mankind for dominance of the world. A mighty magician and heroic warrior rose to power in this deadly time. His many exploits and command of the magical arts earned him the title of the High One. His greatest endeavor began with the creation of a jewel-encrusted orb imbued with much of his magical powers. From his fortress on the Isle of Lepore, the High One used his orb to seal off a protected realm. The Sargalo Sea and its islands were separated from all contact with the rest of the world. It was the High One's intent to exterminate the many enemies of man within his kingdom and help mankind grow to power without constant threat of extinction by other races. When this goal was achieved, the High One intended to lead his people back to time to tame uh, the rest of the world. Unfortunately, the High One's work was only partially completed when tragedy struck. The orb was stolen and hidden somewhere in the realm. 
With the loss of much of his power, the High One was killed in battle against a united army of mankind's remaining foes. Fortunately for the human inhabitants of the realm, the army quickly broke into small bickering bands that wandered off to become bandits and predators on weak and unwary travelers like yours truly. Years have passed. The kingdom is returning to savagery where monsters wander freely in all fear of the night. Villages, temples, and castles stand ruined and abandoned as mankind congregates at only the most secure of cities. Travel is safely accomplished only by armed bands. The Caliph of Lapur, a usurper to the throne, has seized the High One's fortress and jealously guards its secrets and powers from anyone who might try to use them for the good of the kingdom. Your mission, should you decide to accept it, is to recover the High One's orb and return it to his fortress. There, with the help of the orb and the secrets of the High One's powers, you... Excuse me. <laughs> you can continue his work and perhaps ensure the survival of the human race. Whew. That's quite, <laughs> quite the backstory. Now, it does go on. This manual's uh, uh, not a huge manual, but you got about, uh, what, about 20 pages or so. And it tells you a lot of that you'll need to know, but it doesn't tell you everything you need to know. For example, what the hell is an old book? <laughs> what do you need that for? Uh, I have no idea. You just have to buy these things and experiment with them. And uh, even if you try to get online and find a guide or hint site or something like that, good luck with that, because nobody really seems to play this game anymore except for <laughs> our good friend Chet over at CRPG Addict, who uh, I, I just uh, really, really my hat's off. I guess I should say my helmet's off to uh, to Chet for putting uh, together a couple pages on uh, Clardy's games. Really helpful. Uh, it's, it's always fun to see other people's experience with these games, right? Uh, but anyway, you got the backstory. <laughs> I told you about uh, Chet's take. So uh, what about my take? Well, let, let's get to the game. Uh, I'm sure you've been having uh, quite a few chuckles over there watching me uh, struggle through this intro. And this is about the probably about the seventh time I've attempted to uh, get anywhere on this island. Uh, it's very tough, uh, as you'll see. And there's a lot of things to consider, very old school stuff. We've got, of course, the food packs, and you have to make sure your army is fed. And you might say, whoa, army? <laughs> Don't you mean character or party or something? No, I meant what I said, army. Uh, you, uh, and that's one of the things that, you know, Chet kind of gets into this a little bit too, and I sort of get into it in Dungeons and Desktops. You know, is it a computer role-playing game if you're, uh, in, in effect, uh, commanding an army instead of a single character or a little group of adventurers. Uh, and some people say it's not really a CRPG at this point. It's more of a war game or a strategy game or whatever. Uh, I don't really get into those fine sorts of uh, the hair-splitting stuff. And anyway, it's a CRPG in my book. <laughs> Literally, check out Dungeons and Desktops. Quite a read. Uh, <laughs> uh, my, I think if you like uh, classic role-playing games, you'll find enough here. And I think Chet pointed this out, too, and a couple other people. Really what this army or number of men amounts to is your health or your hit points. Uh, if you have 20 men, uh, <laughs> you have more health than if you only have 5, and so on. And, of course, if you run out of men, just like if you run out of hit points, you're dead. And you have to start over. Uh, so it, it's not that different in just the way that it feels playing the game. Uh, so anyway, I won't say any more about that. <laughs> if, you, if you are looking for some kind of pure role-playing experience and go play Dungeons and Dragons, you, you may have heard of that game. Uh, anyway, we're here on the island, and we've come upon a party of warriors. Now, these uh, warriors, uh, they could be good guys, could be bad guys. Uh, let's see who the... Oh, they're fiends! Oh, my God! They're bandits! Oh, <laughs> And those Apple II sounds will just scare the crap out of you. Holy. You know, it's just like totally quiet. And then all of a sudden, bah, 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 bah. oh, man, I can't tell you how many times I about leaped out of my chair <laughs> uh, with this. Uh, anyway, I uh, tried to run away. I didn't run away. And uh, we're here. Didn't get away, I should say. Uh, so we're here fighting. And you can see we got a little breakdown of the stats. Uh, weapons and armor. Uh, experience and strength. Uh, luck and totals. And you might think you can... Uh, futz around with this, but really all you can do is either run or fight every time and then sort of casino style uh, We get a little chance to stop this roll and You know, I guess if you're quicker than me Maybe you can hit up on the number that you really want and always have good rolls But 
Now, I don't know how big of a difference it really makes anyway, but uh, it's a little more fun, I suppose, than just hitting the F button over and over. And at least you feel, <laughs> again, kind of like in a casino. Oh, there we go. Killed them all. Yep, jackpot. Check it out. <laughs> uh Whoa, 570 quadrants of gold! Yes, yes, it is exactly like <laughs> it's a slot machine <laughs> in Las Vegas. Uh, I mean, you're just kind of hitting the key. You're trying to trusting. You got your own little system just like in a slot machine, right? You hold your, your mouth a certain way, your eye a certain way. You say your uh, magic words, uh, whatever your little routine is, and sometimes you win. And you, and you feel like that was because of uh, <laughs> whatever shenanigans you were up to. Oh, and here we've got a wandering warlock accompanied by several apprentices. 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 <laughs> there we go. <laughs> and still kind of excited about those quadroons. You don't realize the first few times uh, how rare that money is, right? And you get truly excited when you find some because you desperately need it. Uh, now, I happen to know, because I read the whole manual, that these uh, warlocks are evil, so I don't even bother trying to get help from them. Uh, just go ahead and fight them, and uh, let's see how I do here. Now, in addition to the uh, number of men under your command, uh, that, that, of course, makes a huge difference, but you also have uh, uh, the, I guess, the battles they fought and won. That's the experience, and then uh, you can find weapons to equip them with and armor to equip them with <laughs> the uh, villages, and I, I'm really confused. I was I'm never able to quite figure out how this works uh, mathematically like if you have five guys in leather five guys in chain a couple guys in plate or whatever uh, how does it all break down numerically i don't know but i assume it's sophisticated enough to uh, work out all those uh, logistics uh, but anyway i seem to do pretty well just uh, getting the best stuff i could afford uh, now there's a lot of uh, real life uh, considerations uh, to keep in mind here uh, one is that these uh, uh, the party has to to eat, so you kind of have to keep an eye on your food. You know, that that kind of reminds me of those. Um, actually, the whole game it reminds me of those expedition games. The what is it, Conquistador one and the uh, Vikings one. Uh, I kind of wonder if they were inspired somehow by this by this game because it feels a lot like that. You know, you got this big army, you got to keep them fed. Uh, you have to have them equipment and there's only so much they can carry and if you get a little farther than i did into this you can actually get horses and so i guess you can move around faster with those but it's a it's a lot of uh just luck uh involved as well right uh i don't know if there's some sure route to victory here uh a couple times i played it and didn't even move twice before i just got annihilated uh, other times though i got pretty far in <laughs> before i got annihilated but uh, one of the things, I guess the overall goal of this first game is to get enough money to get all the way up there to that little plus in the, at the northern, uh, northwestern tip of the island there. You can see it. And I can buy a ship from there. And then, then I'll enter the second part of the game. But you don't really want to rush there because uh, you need to make sure you have enough experience and some decent gear and, of course, plenty of money and a big enough army. Otherwise, you'll just uh, do all that work and then get promptly uh, smashed anyway. And then, of course, uh, being an old school uh, game in all the worst senses of the of the of the name. I mean, there's a lot of gotchas here. You know, if you you can get all the way to the to the end game, and if you don't have a certain object uh, from this part of the game, you're screwed. You can't you can't win the game. I don't know if it's an age thing or just this point of uh, game history or whatever, but I just don't remember being all that obsessed with finishing the games I owned uh, back then. I just wanted to play them. Uh, I remember with, uh, uh, with Bard's Tale, it was a lot of fun just creating a party, going and exploring the town of Scarabray a little bit, getting killed. wasn't a big deal, right? You just started over, <laughs> you know, again and again, and that was uh, fun. Kind of like playing an arcade game. You know, you don't necessarily want to beat Space Invaders, uh, let's say. It's just it's fun to play. And I, I kind of feel sad. I feel like we've lost that to some extent uh, in modern times. <laughs> um, anyway let me know your thoughts on that i'm kind of curious uh, but anyway back to this game uh, so i made it to this second city here and uh, a lot of these locations are randomized uh, from time to time or from game to game and it, a couple times i came back to a village and they had a different different items for sale at the bazaar 
Now, some of these are quest items, I guess you could call them, like the oil lamp. Uh, if you don't have an oil lamp, you won't be able to go into some dark areas that you'll find on the map. Now, the weapons and armor are uh, spelled out here in the manual. It's a table. Uh, there's four types of armor, leather, shield, chainmail, and plate. Plate being the best, leather being the worst, and the shield is actually a type of armor. So I don't think you could have a leather armor and a shield or plate armor and a shield, at least if I'm reading this table correctly. It's sort of a either-or proposition. Uh, the same thing with weapons. You have battle axe being the worst weapon up to number six being the longbow. So I guess ideally you want all your guys equipped with uh, plate mail and longbow, and that would be the best. Uh, I'm not sure where helmets fit in. I found some helmets. You know, I, I don't know what it does. It could be maybe some kind of protection in case of <laughs> something falling on your head. Uh, I really don't know. There's a lot of mysterious items. Maybe some of the stuff just doesn't do anything. You know, some red herrings or some things that uh, Clardy never got around to <laughs> implementing. Uh, other things, though, you just have to buy them and maybe you'll find a place to use them later, like the uh, shovel, or the rope, uh, the compass, and the spare cells, and all that sort of stuff you'll need in the second part of the game. Uh, and one of the things that Chet talked about in his uh, review was that you have to really be careful with your money because uh, you can fool around and not have enough money uh, by the end of this uh, first part of the game and there won't be any more stuff to kill on the island to get more money so you'll just be screwed at that point. So you got to be careful with the money. I guess that's why this haggling is such an important part of the game. You'll notice I'm frequently haggling, uh, trying to get this, these items for even one quadroon less. Uh, then uh, what I might have to pay, and it turns out to be pretty important, right? Because, again, you got to think, you got 10 men or 15 men, maybe even 25, I don't know how many men you can get. Uh, but it could be that shaving a couple of uh, quadroons off of the price of these things uh, might make a big difference. I might as well say in passing here, too, uh, some of you might have been a, a little concerned about this uh, quadroon business. And uh, I talked to Clardy about this in the interview coming up on Matt Chat, but... Uh, if you don't know, there's a little bit of uh, a history, I guess, behind the word quadroon. It's a person of, a, I guess it's a, what we call a derogatory term for a, a mixed race person. Uh, back in the day, you don't really, I don't ever, I've never heard the word before, but anyway, apparently there's some racial uh, overtones to it. Not what Clardy uh, had in mind. He just was playing around with this idea of a doubloon. You know, I thought, I guess. Uh, Instead of double, this would be quad, you know, four, quadroon. Uh, anyway, uh, Clardy didn't even know the, the word uh, had any other meaning, and I hope nobody gets offended by it or uh, offended by my use of it here. Uh, but anyway, you know, if you are, Clardy's sorry, and I hope you're not offended either. All right, anyway, back to the, <laughs> back to the game yet again. Uh, finding uh, more groups of warriors. Uh, they appear to be friendly. Let's see if these... Oh, the poor bandits! God! Man, I'm just not having much luck with <laughs> 10 bandits this time. I'll have plate armor, uh, broadswords, and spears. And I was completely unprepared. And, you know, while I'm thinking about that, uh, that works into the stats in this game. Uh, strength, experience, speed, charisma, wisdom, dexterity, and alignment. Uh, strength determines success in battle. Experience also determines success in battle. That goes from 10 to infinity. Speed, success in flight. Charisma, ability to attract recruits. Wisdom, ability to correctly use magic. Dexterity, ability to avoid or survive hazards. And alignment, to be helped or attacked by beings of similar alignment. So, those warriors are dead and looks like they have a chest of some sort. <laughs> oh, go, no, poisonous spores were released. Man, what is it with me and freaking poison? God, I'm always getting poisoned in these games. Man. And it looks like, oh, it lowered my strength. I, if I <laughs> I don't remember. What was my strength before? Oh, I don't know. If I were making a game like this, and I would make the uh, poison affect your strength. So I'm <laughs> pretty sure that's what Clardy did. Uh, but anyway, it's not good, right? I don't know if I can heal myself. Maybe I'm just permanently stuck with this lowered uh, strength let's see here i am at the entrance to an ancient temple uh and i have to use an item to try to get in there let's see what is the correct item to use brass key had no useful effect massive bronze doors uh, let's see i wonder if there's a bronze key that might get me through there 
Uh, crowbar had no useful effect. Uh, let's see what else I could try. Oh, there we go. The lock pick. You got in. It looks deserted. You haven't found anything. You want to search? Yes, I want to search. <laughs> oh, we have a room with an altar. On the altar is a scroll. Do you want to get it or leave it? Now, what kind of wuss is going to say leave it? Of course you're going to get it. Come on, let's see. Okay, you got the scroll. Looks like there's nothing else in here. You'd better leave now. The entrance sealed behind you as you left. Well, I guess that's uh, Clardy's way of saying there's no point in searching any further. You're done. All right, let's look at this uh, scroll. Let's see. It's number 19. Doesn't tell me, of course, <laughs> what it does. It could just kill me, I guess. But you know what? I want to uh, to use it. All right, let's try it out. Let's just see what happens. Maybe <laughs> something good. Spell written in ancient hieroglyphics. Oh! Oh, what happened? Rocks nearby transmuted into gold. 1,000 quadrones! Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was exciting. <laughs> you, I hope you guys are watching that screen. That was crazy. I uh, got 1,000 quadrones. I think that's probably enough maybe to get to the ship now. Oh! God! Bandits! <laughs> I guess they want my thousand quadrooms! They must have heard me yelling, gosh! Here they are, 16. Oh, they only got leather, though. All right, let's kick some butt here, guys. Come on, it's 14 of us. Uh, maybe we can do this. Let's see if my luck holds out. Run or fight? Oh, see, I got one casualty, but I killed some of their guys. I think we might... That would really stink, you know, if I... If I died uh, just after getting that gold, man, I would be really, really pissed off about that. Let's see. Lock, come on, come on, come on. Really want to kill these bastards. Ah, got him. Hell yes. Dead. Oh, and there's another chest. <laughs> oh. <laughs> man, I'm just really doing awesome this stuff. You know, I wish I'd have shown you guys like the first five or six times I tried this. I mean... I didn't get anywhere. I'm just getting killed mercilessly. And I'm, I'm actually getting uh, really lucky this time. It's, it's really exciting. I might actually make it all the way to that second part of the game. So, wow. <laughs> uh, I don't, I'm pretty excited. It's not just the caffeine. Uh, I might actually be able to get off this island. I mean, that, that is uh, really exciting. You, you know, I feel sorry for people that are so obsessed with the like, cutting edge graphics they won't play anything old it's got to be the the newest of the new on their you know high tech gaming rig with the dual card yada yada and they end up uh, not even giving a game like this a chance you know they just, they just look at this they look at the graphics they laugh at it they say why would anybody want to play a, an old game it's ancient it's it's obsolete it sucks i mean come on why would you want to play that when you can play dragon age <laughs> inquisition <laughs> I'm always like, fine, you know, you play your Dragon Age Inquisition. Uh, that's fine. And if uh, you're playing that and I'm playing this and I'm having more fun with this, uh, <laughs> either you're crazy or I'm crazy. And I'm probably betting it's me. But but anyway, uh, let's see. Where are we here? We've got 1,100 quadroons. Uh, I'm getting closer, gradually worming my way up there to that village to the northeast. And... You know, one of the nice things that Clardy put in here, I like this uh, where that it tells you what you're around. It's like you see a village to the northeast or temple to the north. It gives you a little bit of a, an idea of what those symbols represent, just in case you don't have the uh, the icons memorized. And it's actually in the manual too, but uh, it says there's castles. Let's see, temples, ruins, cities, tombs, huts, castles, mountains, rivers, lakes, you, and the port. Ooh, what do we have here? Ancient ruin. It's dark inside. What do I use? I'm going to use my shiny oil lamp. Got in. It looks deserted. You haven't found anything? Do you want to search your leaf? Search, search, search. I'm not going anywhere until I find something. Search. <laughs> no, I'm not leaving. Search, <laughs> searching, searching. I uh, hope I don't run out of food. Uh, come on. Search, 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 search. I know there's something here. Oh, what is it? Oh, another, another altar. Oh, magic lamp. I wonder if there's a genie in here. What, what have I got here? Magic lamp. <laughs> oh, I want to rub my lamp. I'm going to go uh, 
turn off the lights now and rub my lamp. No, I'm just kidding, guys. This. <laughs> uh, let's see. Where is that lamp? Man, I've got a lot of items. I have to try to find it here. Let's see. Uh, you know, an old book. No, I don't want to use the old book. Uh, let's see. Return. Uh, come on. Where's the... Come on. <laughs> Getting a little too excited here about this lamp. Okay, calm down. Let's see. what There it is. Number three. All right. Use it. You may increase speed, increase charisma, increase wisdom, save it. Which? Well, you know what I don't see there is increased strength. Uh, that's kind of interesting. I don't know why I can't <laughs> increase the strength. That's what I really want to do. Uh, anyway, it's pretty cool. You can increase these other things. Uh, what is it? The speed helps you get away, I guess. Or helps you with uh, success in flight. Yeah. <laughs> I probably should have done Charisma. Uh, ability to attract recruits. Oh, now I have men trapped under a fallen branch. And uh, I guess the shovel's not going to help. What would I use for that, I wonder? A uh, rope? Let's try the rope. No? Huh. Well, you know, I don't really know what would be the, uh, the crowbar. What do you use to get somebody that's trapped under a log? I don't have any... I wonder if it's the, the axe, battle axes. don't have any of those, unfortunately. You know, I guess I'm just going to have to leave these guys... Jeez, uh, that seems kind of mean. Uh, but I don't know what else to do. I have to just leave them. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to get some help and be back. Yeah, all right. Man, I feel pretty heartless. I don't know what it was I was supposed to use back there. Let me just get a list of the whole, all the items. Maybe... There's something. There's an iron hook. I wonder if that was it. I don't have any of those. Uh, I don't think a net would help. Maybe a horse could pull them off. There's a 10-foot plank. <laughs> uh, maybe that's what I needed. Or monkey? <laughs> Jeez. I'm just not really sure, but there's no, uh, no helping those guys now, so... Uh, <laughs> let that be a lesson to you guys. Now, unfortunately... Okay, I don't know why that popped up. Continue listing. Uh, your nine men can carry 20... What? Oh! Syntax error. <laughs> oh, no. Uh, if I... Uh... No, there we go. Okay, whew. Uh, let's see. Uh, your nine men can carry 2250. You have 2502. You must dump 252. All right. So, yeah, this sucks. I'm going to have to drop some stuff. Now, it does say in the manual that if you drop stuff out in the wilderness, it might still be there. You might be able to come back later and pick it up. But there's no guarantees. Uh, some people could come by and pick it up and steal it, I suppose. So, yeah. But I have no choice. I have to find something to drop. Uh, let's see. So I guess this is a matter of figuring out what you don't need. Uh, so if you have any surplus uh, armor. Now, one of the things that did stymie me is I don't, I was never able to find a place to sell anything. So even though it says the value there, like the armor is worth more than the uh, crowbar and so on, uh, I don't know of any way to sell stuff. I, I, I don't know if I'm missing something. Uh, none of the villages I went to or the merchants I found had an option there to sell stuff. So maybe that's kind of irrelevant, just kind of a notion of how much you'd have to pay for that. Uh, if you did dump it and needed it later, you had to, to pay the 240 to get another one. Uh, and also that uh, something I figured out later was the weight and the value are cumulative. So it's the, the backpack doesn't weigh 10 pounds. It's the two backpacks that weigh 10 pounds. So each backpack weighs 5 pounds and is worth uh, 10 uh, quadroons, if that makes any sense. So you have to kind of do some mental math here to figure out, you know, how much of what thing do you have to dump. And uh, my, <laughs> my uh, arithmetic skills, you know, all of that multiplication and <laughs> division, I mean, whoo, I didn't take that. That's one of those advanced courses in my college, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so let's just uh, skip this, and I'll save you the pain of watching me struggle with basic math, and we can move on. All right, so anyway, the good news is I'm getting closer and closer to my destination there. Uh, the port. <phone rings> Keep seeing these daggers. Oh, small caravan of merchants. So you can see here, I can try to uh, buy stuff from them, but there's no option to sell stuff. However, they do sell the uh, machetes there. I guess I needed that to get through that uh, underbrush. Uh, the, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but the contracts 
Uh, if you buy those, uh, that's actually more troops or more army, <laughs> more army men, more soldiers. Jeez, what is with my vocabulary today? Yeah, you can buy the uh, contracts and get some more men. Uh, instead, I just having to wait till you stumble across them. Hope they're not bandits. Uh, the backpacks, as far as I can tell, those allow you to carry more weight. Not exactly sure how much more that allows you to carry, uh, but I'll go ahead and pick some up just in case. And uh, rather than just plod on here, all right, so now I can go back and try to pick up my gear. So there's my daggers. And the daggers, I don't even really care about those. <laughs> uh, but it looks like, uh, wasn't that bad? Like, oh, what do we have here? Wandering Wizard. Uh, now these guys are good. Oh, I got another lamp. Okay, so... Uh, that's nice. So, you know, I did lose uh, a lot of stuff, but on the other hand, I got another magic lamp. Let's see what this one does. Uh, looks like the same stuff. Speed, charisma, wisdom. <laughs> I'll do the wisdom that time. <laughs> I feel like I need some wisdom. Uh, but anyway, I do not see the gear. Uh, another small caravan of merchants. Wow, these guys are everywhere. Uh, one of the things that old uh, Chet mentioned is that sometimes uh, if you do run out of uh, money, you can try to attack the good people, <laughs> like these merchants, and get their money. Of course, uh, you'll suffer alignment and be evil. So that might not be acceptable to you. Uh, let's see. Get some more food. Yeah, that's, a, that's the downside. The more people you have, yeah, sure, you got a bigger army, but you also have to get more food for them and uh, more backpacks so they can carry more stuff. And, and it just goes on and on. You're just always uh, worrying about the next step. Now let me just, just ask you this. Uh, would it ever occur to you to try to uh, put in a negative number when you're haggling with these guys? You know, would that ever occur to you to try that? <laughs> now, I won't spoil anything for you, but uh, uh, there's a pretty fun story coming up in the uh, Clardy interviews. All right, so I'm still trying to get up there to the, to the port, and I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm just going to go ahead and skip forward uh, and let you see that rather than... Uh, continue on and on, right? All right, so here I am at the port, and you can see the ship is actually a lot more than I thought it would be. It's 2,600 quadroons. I only have 870. Again, a real shame there's no way to sell stuff. <laughs> man, I'm going to feel pretty stupid if one of you guys is like, man, Matt, didn't you know you could just push whatever key to sell your stuff? Anyway, I'm out in the Walmart parking lot now, leaving the store and now... <laughs> Dragons. I got a feeling this will probably be game over. <laughs> oh, good job on that dragon. Look at that thing. It looks kind of like a T-Rex, maybe? I'm not sure what kind of look he was going for. He had a nice dragon on his title screen. Uh, anyway, this is probably toast, but why not go ahead and uh, see what happens. Let's see. Luck. Pretty low. Well, I killed two of them. You know, one of the things, too, that... uh. I have to agree with uh, Chad. It's kind of sucky about this. Uh, you never get to a point where you're just kind of dominating the island. Uh, the monsters automatically scale with you. So if you have more troops, they have more troops. If you have better armor, they get better armor. Uh, and so on and so forth. And, you know, that, that to me is kind of a letdown. It's kind of a cheap way to kind of keep you going. Uh, I like it better when you can really get to a point where you can just <laughs> run around smashing stuff. They was smashing you before. Wow. <laughs> I have killed the dragons and there is a chest and 886 quadroons, <laughs> which isn't enough to get the ship, unfortunately. But ever so close. 1749, so you know, I think I'm in pretty good shape if I just keep wandering around this island. Uh, there's not too much more uh, gold. And then I can go to the second part. Uh, so let's uh, keep exploring, see what else we can find on this island. Now there's a 10-foot plank. Wouldn't touch you with a 10-foot plank. So I wonder what that plank is for. I'm guessing maybe you could use that as a lever. Uh, anyway, let's see. Low on food. Okay, so i got to trek back <laughs> to the uh, ship mart and get some more food packs. Uh, one of the things I should mention, too, is if you do haggle too much, the, you'll, you'll piss off the vendors, and then they won't sell you anything, which could mean starvation. 
in this case, right, if you run out of food. And I didn't notice any kind of way to harvest food or, or what you call it, forage for food. Uh, I never found any food just lying around. So as far as I can tell, you just have to buy it. And there's the, the sextant, too, is something else you'll need, as well as a compass. Now, let's see, there's some more warriors. Wow. So six of them all with swords. Oh, like, like lycanthropes. All right, so these are... Uh, werewolves, a.k.a. guys that have not been manscaped. Yeah, we're up against the Tom Selleck's and the Burt Reynolds of the <laughs> Sargalos Island. <laughs> oh, man. Please don't tell me any of you guys have done that that uh, waxing stuff. I mean, come on! All right, let's see. We're fighting, 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 fighting. Totals. Uh, I'm not sure if these uh, <laughs> werewolves <laughs> are tougher than the dragons or what. They seem to be giving me more of a run for my money. Uh, they've killed off a couple of my men already, or one of my guys. Killed 21 of theirs, though, so I think we're looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah, we killed them all. There you go. Underneath all that hair, there really wasn't much fight in them. All right, so we're back in the game. Yeah, one of the things, too, I like about this is when you lose some men... Uh, in a way, it's almost kind of a good thing, right? Because you have <laughs> fewer mouths to feed. There's another one of those planks. Uh, you know, I don't know if these, uh, how many of these items I need, really. Do I need more than one plank or more than one oil lamp? I guess maybe they break or wear out, so might as well take it. Oh, here we have ghouls. So I don't know if it's just that I'm getting more experience points or what, but I seem to be up against a wider variety of critters. I've yet to come across a rat. <laughs> you know, as excited as I am already, though, I probably don't want to come across that fight at this point. Let's see what we can do about these ghouls. Oh, they've killed four of my guys. Killed four of theirs, though. Maybe this will be okay. Oh, they killed six of mine now. I've got 17 left. They've got 18. Let's keep it going. Keep it going. <laughs> Who are you going to call in a situation like this? Oh, eight casualties. Oh, guys, this isn't looking too good. Oh, I can't run away. Oh, I should have got those. Should, I should have used those lamps for speed. Then I could have gotten away from these, these bad boys. Let's see, 13, 18. Come on, come on. I need some luck. I don't Why are there two, uh, <laughs> two? Am I rolling for them, too? I never quite figured out what the deal is with that. Okay, your speed is three. Nope, that hasn't changed. <laughs> It's hoping maybe I could damage him a little bit and slow him down, but but nope. All right, five. I'm down to five guys and some fries. <laughs> oh no, no, God, don't. Oh, well, all the men are dead. Uh, better luck next time, sire. <laughs> so anyway, guys, there's a look at. Uh, Odyssey, the complete app venture. Hope you enjoyed that. Go check it out. I think you'll have fun. And that's all for this week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Should be back next week with the uh, first of those Robert C. Clardy interviews, and those are going to be utterly fantastic. I know you guys are going to absolutely love those, so stay tuned, especially if you're interested in the early days of the computer role-playing game or just computer games in general. Uh, you're going to really like this uh, Clardy stuff, so stay tuned for that. As always, I want to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much for your support of this show. really means a lot to me, guys. Could not, would not do this uh, without you, so thank you so much for supporting the show. Uh, remember, if you want to support the show, you can like the video, you can subscribe to the channel, you can tell people about it, uh, or you can go to that link in the show notes to the Patreon site and uh, sign up for a uh, Matt Chat membership. I get you some pretty cool perks, I think. Uh, or you can just go to mattchat.us, and there's a couple different ways to support the show there. Uh, really, all I ask is a buck a show uh, to keep these episodes in production. So if you've already done that, again, thank you. If you're uh, thinking about it, uh, just let me know <laughs> what it is I can do for you uh, to push you over the edge, because I, I really appreciate your support. And whatever you do, thanks. All right, so you probably noticed the... Uh, Lack of a drinking horn. <laughs> uh, that's because after the uh, news, I'll be opening up some boxes, and guess what? One of those boxes contains the spanking new drinking horn 2.0. It's going to be really exciting. Uh, at least I'm really excited about it. It's uh, going to be utterly fantastic, uh, so stay tuned for that. But first, what about that news from the Matt Cave?
right, so first of all, uh, I apologize. It's been a while since we've done one of, these, uh, one of these episodes. I had some trips to go on. My brother got married. I think I remember mentioning that. Uh, then I had a trip to the in-laws, just kind of surprised the trip there. Uh, and then after that, I got back and my hot water heater exploded, flooding the basement. So we've kind of been dealing with that. Uh, not that that any, <laughs> you know, just a bunch of random stuff, nothing too bad. Uh, you know, it wasn't anything really damaged or anything, just kind of a big mess to clean up. So uh, just in case you were curious, where the hell is Matt? Uh, now you know. All right, let's see the news. Uh, first up, we have something from Shane Stacks. A couple things from him, actually. And uh, by the way, Shane has agreed to be my co-author on the uh, Dungeons and Desktops 2.0 book. We're actually updating this. It's going to have uh, full color photos this time, screenshots, I should say. Uh, we're going to put some new chapters in there, uh, fix all the errors that we can find. By the way, if you, if you have a copy of that, if you notice anything wrong in the old one, uh, let me know, send me an email or something, and uh, we'll be sure to uh, fix that in the second version. But anyway, really looking forward to that. Uh, but that's not the news, though. <laughs> Shane, uh, he wrote in about this. You might remember this picture of the guy, gamer duct taped, and he's sort of up on the ceiling playing uh, uh, with his computer at a LAN party. Uh, well, we now know the real story of what was going on with that picture, and that's over at Kotaku. I won't spoil it for you. Just post a link on the show notes if you want to go take a look at that. It's kind of fun. Uh, also, there's an extensive write-up over at, uh, let's see, PC Gamer about Bardstail Force. This is by Wes Finland. And this uh, goes into a lot of detail about the world, the graphics, the uh, grid movement or freebase movement, the setting of the game, lore, the puzzle weapons. Uh, just a lot of stuff here. A lot of meat to this article, I thought. Uh, so go check that out. I mean, I cannot wait for <laughs> Bard's Tale 4. I mean, I'm just really, really excited about this. So I'll definitely be covering it on the show. And let's see, what else do we have here? There's an extensive interview. <laughs> you know, if you're not finished uh, reading, or if you want even more reading, go check this out. This is an extensive interview with Richard Garriott, a.k.a. Lord British. It's by Dean Takihashi over at Venture Beat. And uh, a lot of the stuff you probably know already if you've been watching this show, if you know about, about uh, Lord British. But there was a couple comments in here I thought were interesting. Uh, one was uh, from Garriott. It says, uh, as a creator, I'm still PC first. But as a player, I'm absolutely mobile first. In fact, there are probably uh, probably only 10 games I have ever played to completion on the PC. <laughs> so, wow, I don't know if he's including his own you know, ultimate games in that, in that list, but, you know, I didn't see that one coming. So what do you think about that, huh? Uh, and then finally, well, I got two last items here. Uh, RPG, according to the RPG Codex, uh, Infinitron over there made a post, and somehow this ended up in my... Uh, <laughs> my inbox. That's just pretty cool. Uh, so Beamdog, uh, they, they were having some issues with the Icewind Dale 2 Enhanced Edition. Uh, well, it turns out the reason they were having trouble is they didn't have the source code. Apparently the source code has disappeared without a trace. So I guess there's a little bit of a, a manhunt on for the uh, the source code. But uh, anyway, I thought that was interesting. You can read a lot more about this and the uh, discussion over at the RPG Codex. I'll post a link to that as well. And then finally, wow, really need to wet my wet my whistle uh, after all this news. Uh, Shane Plays has also posted a an interview with Chris Avalon. Had him on this show a few times. Uh, but he's uh, on uh, Shane's show to talk about Pathfinder Kingmaker on uh, Shane's radio show podcast. So I'll post a link to that. So, wow, lots and lots of stuff. Uh, go check the show notes for all the links to those items. Okay, so let's do these unboxings. Uh, the first box is one from... Uh, Robert Sambat, uh, Sambat uh, from uh, Berlin, Connecticut. He, he just sent me this. I'm not sure what's in here. Really have no idea. Uh, he's already sent me a lot of cool stuff. So he's uh, pretty much a super, super supporter of the show at this point. Maybe there's some cookies in here. Some rats on a stick. I don't know. Maybe there's a bomb. Maybe he's tired of me. <laughs> Maybe he's uh, pulling a uh, grump. Was it grouchy smart, uh, tricky smurf? Okay, what do we have in here? Oh, he sent me some popcorn. What I always wanted. <laughs> yeah, let's see. What is buried? Buried under here. Ooh, what in the hell do we? Oh my goodness, we've got a black crypt. I've actually never seen the the box to this. Uh, this is a an Amiga RPG. Yeah, and this is the Amiga version. Was that, was it, were there other versions? I'm not even sure. 
A black crypt. Wow, that's a that's sort of a cult classic, right? I remember looking for this on uh, eBay a few times. Just were, was never able to find it, at least not for a price I could uh, afford. Wow. Wow, so, yeah, well, thanks, Robbie, to this. I'll definitely have to cover this one in a future episode. You know, I actually get a lot of requests here for Black Crypt. I know a lot of you guys are Amiga, Amiga fans. Got Amiga 4000 sitting right over there, thanks to uh, my good friend Nathan. Yep, we got the manual here, the discs. Fantastic stuff. Wow, look at that thing. This is the Platinum Edition, too. So, wow, Robbie. <laughs> He's a fantastic guy. Definitely be covering that one. All right, let's get this drinking horn open. Let's see, from the Nordic Inn. I hope he's got his, uh, his uh, information in here because I know some of you guys would like one of these horns as well. Anyway, let's get this puppy open. Going to be very careful. Not even going to joke around about this box. <laughs> I know he's uh, worked on this thing for months. Really tried to get it absolutely perfect. Okay, I'm going to just tear right through that. All right, so I got all of the, uh, the tape off of this, and I'm ready to open this. Really <laughs> excited. Okay, let's get that out of the way, and this out of the way, and let's see. Oh, here's the holder. That's cool. What do we have here? <laughs> and there she is. The even more excellent drinking horn. Wow, look at this thing. I mean, the, the artwork on there, that was actually submitted by one of you guys, or by the uh, boyfriend of one of you girls, I should say, a zombie girl. Uh, so thank you very much. I want to get your uh, boyfriend's name so I could properly uh, thank him for this artwork, but he's done some fantastic uh, Matt Chat themed artwork on, for the, uh, that uh, Steinar was able to apply to the drinking horn. I have no idea how he, how he did it, but it looks fantastic. Got the rats there, got the skulls there. This one has a, like a brass a tip on there and a brass a rim around it. Not to mention the shape on this thing. Man, it's just completely freaking awesome. Wow. <laughs> you know, I guess it's clean. I'm going to go ahead and drink out of this as soon as I uh, get my... What is There's some more stuff in here. Let me see. What do we have at the bottom of this box? Whoa. Man, check this out. It's like a, I guess this is the holder for the horn, right? It's like a, a wall plaque. Oh, well, I guess I could put that right up on the shelf. And he's put, he's even put the, uh, the same artwork on this. Man, that is just amazing. See, I'm going to find a spot to put this something somewhere permanent. Let's see, I guess this sort of fits in. How do you think it goes? Probably like that. It probably just sort of sort of nestles in there, maybe like that. I'm not actually sure. I have to kind of play around with this to figure out <laughs> how, to, how to position it. But anyway, wow. Didn't even expect to get this piece. Uh, so thank you very, very much, Steinar. Uh, this is really fantastic work, but you know, I'm ready to put this thing to the test. So uh, let's talk about the ale of the week. And you better believe I got a special ale to try out my new drinking horn with. All right, so I think it's supposed to go like this. You know, duh. <laughs> uh, this way you can see that nice artwork. And I'm going to have to adjust my shelf a little bit because I need to make it higher. It just doesn't quite fit under there, but I can fix that uh, very easily. But anyway, check out the craftsmanship on that. I know you guys are going to want one of these. Uh, so again, I'll post a link to uh, Steinar's site on the show notes of the video. All right, so what about the ale that we want to christen this thing with? Uh, well, it's right over here in the beautiful reliquary. <laughs> <laughs> sent to me uh, from Brian Frago. You probably remember this. Uh, one of the uh, Bard's Tale uh, Kickstarter bonuses there. Just a really sweet reliquary. And it turns out it fits my uh, double shot, double black, black ale very well. Now I wanted to get a very special um, ale to try out my new drinking horn with. And I thought this would do the trick. Uh, this is from the Bent Paddle Brewing Company. Uh, they're out of Duluth, Minnesota, which isn't that far from here. Uh, but it's a black ale aged in oak barrels with vanilla beans and coffee added. Some things get better with age and vanilla and cold, uh, cold press. Uh, this robust version of our black ale features a smooth, chocolatey, semi-roasted malt profile with notes of oak and caramel from extended aging in bourbon uh, barrels. 
This iteration of the Double Black Ale features a double shot of both cold pressed coffee and whole bean vanilla for an extra level of flavor complexity and the perfect companion for a late night viewing of the Northern Lights or can accompany any natural wonder or computer role playing game you may come across. Now I tweaked that a little bit, uh, but you guys probably didn't even notice, did you? Uh, anyway, let's get this uh, open and see what it's all about. All right, so let's get some of this double shot double black into the even more excellent drinking horn. And it's a brand new drinking horn, folks, so it's going to take me a little while to get used to it, so you can, might have some chuckles at my expense. That's okay. Let's get it around. You know, you got to be delicate with a drinking horn. <laughs> you don't want to go stabbing yourself with it, right? And I'm a lefty. I don't know if this is a left-handed or a right-handed drinking horn, but we're going to make it work. Anyway, let's give this a taste. Actually, let's give it a smell first. Wow. Man, that just smells really, really good. You get a strong uh, uh, bourbon, like that bourbon uh, cask or bourbon barrel uh, aroma. You definitely smell that. A little bit of a uh, cherry flavor. You smell a little bit of coffee, too. Not really any hint of the vanilla in the aroma, but it smells really, really good. Let me just put it that way. I kind of like the way that just sort of nestles in there. That's <laughs> anyway, let's give it a taste. Well, it's a very, uh, a very thick uh, ale here. We've got a lot of uh, coffee flavor, um, a lot of bourbon flavor, actually. Strong cherry, sort of smoky, woodsy uh, flavor there. I guess oaky would be the word to use. Uh, very, very pleasant. Uh, it's not overpowering. Uh, I'm kind of a, a little skeptical of the uh, coffee flavored ales because sometimes they, they do, uh, they get carried away with the coffee flavor. But uh, this is just, it's, it's there, but it's not overpowering. It's actually perfectly blended in. So you get just enough coffee flavor to kind of balance those other ones. Now let me give it another taste, though. Still trying to get used to the new horn here. Yeah, this one is just really, really superb. I mean, all the flavors they advertise, vanilla, coffee, uh, bourbon. I mean, you, you taste all of them. No, nothing uh, really overpowers anything else. It's just a really, really, really uh, nice balance. Try it one more time. Yeah, I mean, uh, what can I say? I mean, this is an exceptional brew. Double shot, double black, black ale. Uh, if you like any of these ingredients <laughs> or any of these aspects, I think you'll really, really like this. And it is uh, right out of Duluth, so just uh, right up the road from uh, St. Cloud, Minnesota, where uh, the Matt Cave resides. Anyway, I'm going to go a full five out of five drinking horns on this. I really, really enjoy this. You know, it's it's hard, I think, when you have so many different flavors you're trying to do. You're trying to do coffee, you're trying to do vanilla, you're trying to do black ale, you're trying to do bourbon. You know, and, uh, how, you know, how do you get it just right so you taste every one of those uh, flavors? But somehow, uh, they nailed it. And I think that deserves a full five out of five drinking horn. So if you can find this double shot, double black, uh, a, uh, black ale aged in oak barrels, uh, definitely give it a shot. I think you'll really enjoy it. All right, so let's wrap up with a quotation then. And uh, I picked up this book, The Broad's Treasury of Wit and Humor for All Occasions. <laughs> and I've been having a lot of fun with this book, actually. There's a lot of great quotes in here. Uh, but I was looking all through this for a good quote for this uh, episode, and I found one about procrastination. And, you know, I kind of procrastinated a little bit. I'm not going to lie. And I had all this other stuff going on, but... Uh, I love this little story here. I think it's very, uh, you know, very <laughs> appropriate. <laughs> I think you'll enjoy it too. It goes something like this. The story is told of a company president who had little tolerance for procrastination. In an effort to increase organizational efficiency, she hung up signs throughout the building that said, Do it now. Within 24 hours... <laughs> Her vice president quit, her secretary got married, and the custodian stole the company delivery van. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that, and see you next week.
Why are you sitting there resting when we're so near the end? Come on, let's go. 